Tales from the Flipside family. What the heck is this mess here? What, what are we doing? What is all this stuff? It's money. I know this series is about a comic shop, but this is one of the things that helps to keep your comic shop alive. When I first started, when I opened, people started bringing me stuff. Um, one of the first things was kids asked if they could play magic in the shop, and of course I said yes. And then I ended up starting to carry magic, and then I started to run tournaments. And now we're probably 50-50. It's sometimes it's more of a magic shop, and it's sometimes it's more of a comic shop. But also, you know, it's a video game shop. So retro video gaming has taken off. Um, we've been in it for a long time, but it wasn't really a huge moneymaker, but I bought a lot of inventory. And then retro video gaming became really hot. Like what I just picked up, the Sega CD with the Sega, with the Genesis attached, which is the console too. It's, uh, it's like 200 bucks. And then um, the 32X, which is the part that clicks into here to do 32-bit games, that's another 130 bucks. Well, you're gonna see a PS1 in the box, with, that's the actually PS-O-N-E. PS1 is a later edition, it's a much smaller one. Uh, that's like $85 in the box. Dreamcasts are 120 to, uh, if you have the sports edition, up to 300, maybe even 500 if, if you got it in the box. Jungle Green N64s, 150 to $180, not in box. There is a lot of money in video games um, and it's a great way to bring stuff in that brings in people that aren't into comic books, that can make you some profit, that can keep your dream of the comic book shop alive. You know, we've had uh, several different people on the, the show uh, that we interviewed and one of them was Dennis from uh, Wonder World Comics and he does a lot of toys and I don't know if he's doing too much video games but he is also running a lot of different SKUs but this is a SKU that's out there that you can pick up pretty cheap and make a really good profit on. If you're not making it in store it's easy to throw up on eBay and they're like it sells like gangbusters. I try to do as little eBay as possible because you know if you've been doing eBay, how painful it is. Um, one, the fees have gone ridiculous. Shipping has gone insane. If you're, se if you're sending electronics, especially older retro gaming, they're very temperamental to moisture, um, heat, cold. So, you know, it could be working when you send it and when it gets there, it doesn't work. And if somebody doesn't know how to, you know, clean it properly, uh, or dry the uh, pins on any of the older NES games systems, uh, they may not get it to work and then you're gonna get a return. We try to do as much as we can in store. We advertise it a lot. Some of the other things are the, the games, the actual video games themselves. Uh, we use, to price all of our games, we use one web page, and it's price charting. Pricecharting.com, you go on there. It actually also has comic book, I don't use it for comic book pricing, but they do have comic book pricing. They also even have sports cards on there that you can go look up sports cards. But we primarily only use that site for video games. There are other ones. There's an, a phone app. Um, if you just Google um, video game pricing app, you'll see, I think it's called Gameplay or something like that. I don't use the app but I know that there is a few other ones out there that do pricing. We've found that the fair price, they gather all the pricing from eBay and Amazon, and then they come up with a median price. So we buy and sell at that median price. Um, now, certain stuff goes insane prices, they get crazy money, and when they do, sometimes we'll, we'll actually check eBay um, if it's a higher dollar game, like let's say in the 100, plus for an, a retro video game. We'll check eBay and what the recent sales are. Um, I don't know how, su how fast price charting actually updates their pricing. So when it's something that's very hot, we'll usually check it on eBay, but that's as, that's as deep as it'll go for that. We also don't, you know, we kind of will buy it untested or tested. If the person wants to wait while we test every single one of the games they bring in, and remember, I buy collections. Can't bring me a three or $400 game and, and sell it to me, I, I don't want it. Now, if you have a three or $400 game plus, you know, a collection, you know, I'll give you the 40% on that game, but I, I need to, 
I'm very risk adverse. Um, and when I can put my risk, and I've said this many, many times, across many items, that $300 game can come down. You know, the market changes, it shifts, somebody finds a bunch of them, and that game comes down. But one of the other games could go up, the system could go up. So I rather buy in bulk, right? In the whole collection. The best part of tested or untested, right? So I'm taking a risk and the person's also taking a risk. If they want to be untested, because it's gonna take several hours to test everything, um, and they're gonna have to hang out in the shop while we do it. Um, if they want us to buy it un untested, there's a percentage less that we pay untested, because we don't know if it works, same with the games. So if they're willing to take, it's usually between 10 and 15%, depending on the condition it looks in. If it looks like in pristine condition, um, I probably will be really close to that 40%. If it looks like it's been through a war, I'm probably gonna be closer to 20%. Um, and it, you know, you can tell how people take care of their stuff, their, you know, their actual controllers, if the, you know, all the buttons are sticky, if it looks like there's been food and crumbs stuck in all of it, you know, you can, you can tell what kind of condition people kept their stuff. Um, adult collectors, obviously get a better price because they've usually kept their stuff in much better condition. And, um, you know, as everything else, uh, another thing to look for is sealed. So like games which are not that profitable to resell, like sports games. A lot of people, you know, once the new Madden comes out, the old Madden's pretty much worthless. But I still buy them, especially sealed. Now, they don't gain a huge amount of extra currently, complete in box, but sealed, they might be 15. But if nobody buys that and sits in my shop a couple of years down the road, uh, there's less and less sealed, sealed out there, more collectors start, and they want to seal, that might go up 25, 35, $45. That's the other great thing about owning a collectible shop is that, yes, sometimes items go down as time goes on, but a lot of items go up. So, you know, you're, it's almost like an investment where it just gains money as long as it, as it sits on my shelf. What we did recently was we remodeled our video game section because we felt people weren't really able to see what we had and it wasn't moving as well. We would have to dig through stuff and they were digging through 30 gallon bins, uh, as you can see back here, of all the systems and all the, all the games and uh, so we're right in the middle of uh, redoing it. And, um, you know, that's another thing when you open a store. Um, Re-merchandising everything uh, is important uh, to constantly be changing because your, your inventory gets old until you re-merchandise it. You move things to, to the front of the store, you move things to the back of the store, you move the whole store around, you change where everything is. And it, it, it generates a little bit of excitement. People think there's a lot of new things when maybe there isn't anything new. So that's important. Now, as far as when you have this many different SKUs, this many different items, you, you also have the capability of trading. And trading is my, my favorite thing. The, when you are trading, we trade, uh, you get 50% value. So if you bring in a Sega CD, it's up and running, you have all the parts, so we're gonna give you 50% of it. So it's, you know, you're gonna get $100 in trade. Now, if they're trading for um, magic or for, let's say they're trading for comics. So I have a $100 comic on the wall and they wanna trade straight up, that's great. I may have gotten that comic in trade and so I only gave that person 50%. So now I've only paid $50 for this item. And it's like in stocks where they talk about margining down. Uh, with trade in, you, in your shop, you're constantly margining down when you, when you do trades. Uh, don't be afraid of trading. Uh, it's quite possible you trade for uh, an item and it goes down and the, the item you traded away goes up. That's just part of the business. It comes out in the wash. But it's your cost versus what your, your profit margin becomes. And if you start margining down, you think if um, that comic got traded in and so I really only gave them $25 
in trade for that um, $100 comic, and then so on and so forth. You know, you're, 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 you can get down to the point of where you have $5 in a $200 item. So, you know, when you're figuring out your profit margins, that's a lot of thing, a thing you have to think about. A um, couple other, you know, uh, things about the video games. The video games themselves are probably the most profitable. Um, certain games, if you've never heard of them, they usually have big value. Uh, horror games right now are pretty hot. So are any kind of Japanese RPGs from the earlier systems. Here's a couple of weird ones uh, with some crazy numbers on them. Bonk's Adventure is like $800 and that's loose. Then you have Bubble Bath Babes. Now I've never seen that and I wish it would come through here because it's $2,500 loose. Just sitting out used pre-owned game, 2,500 bucks. And then one we recently sold uh, out of here was Bubble Bobble to part two, uh, $400. It's actually like 440, 450. We, uh, are one of our regular customers, we sold to him for $400. And we bought it in a big collection and didn't even know it was in the collection. We just asked the person, they, they brought it in and they said, what will you give me for this? We said, well, what would you like? Uh, and they just named a number. We just looked in, figured out about how many games they had in there and it ended up being like five dollars a game uh, i think we paid like 150 so there's like 30 games and this 400 dollars game was in there and we didn't we didn't even know it that's another thing is is that we like to pay uh you know we like to pay up we pay well 40 a lot of people don't think is paying up but we do like uh to pay what the person is figure expect that they should get but some people do cleanouts they do um, a lot of different buying where they just want to move it turn it back into cash as fast as possible and we'll buy it at that at that price when they come in and they make you know they just give us a number and it's really beneficial to us because so like I paid 150 dollars for for that collection and with one game, I'm well into the profit. It's one of the things that help us keep the lights on and keep us running. Let you know that running a comic book shop and a collectible shop, I tell people all the time, you know, hey, open a comic shop. It's not easy. You know, I, it's easy for me to say, I'm going through all these things to get people to open more comic shops and make more comic readers. But it's a, it's a very tough business. Comic shops go out of business probably as fast, or if not faster, than restaurants. Um, it's a very tough, tough, tough game. Where this is a this is not a need. This is this is a want, uh, and it's one of the first things people cut out when times get tough. If you're not buying, then people start to lose faith in the collectible. So if they can't at least turn in and get 50% or 40 or 50% of the value of the item that they purchased, it, it, it makes them sour. And then they they stop collecting that it has to keep turning. Now they understand it's a market and it's volatile and it'll move, um, but you can't just say no. I mean, you can lower your price. You can say, well, you know, when you bought it, it was $100. I would have gave you 40 if it was still 100, but now it's come down to 80. So I have to give you 40% of the 80. But if you just say, I'm not buying anymore, then how can you expect to pe for other people to buy what you're selling? It's a collectible shop. Uh, you're hoping to, to make a lot of comic book readers and have subscribers, because that will hopefully pay your rent if you have enough. Uh, come and subscribe at Haven for Heroes, because we need subscribers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so different SKUs, especially uh, collectibles that are adjacent a lot of your uh, comic book readers and a lot of your magic players and Pokemon players are video game nuts. Um, you know, it's like their other collectible. And it is very easy to move people over into this. They're looking to spend money in your shop to keep you going. If they don't need a comic and they don't need a magic card and they don't need a, a Funko Pop, maybe they'll buy a, a video game. Yes, this wasn't about comics today, but it was about how to survive in a collectible shop and a comic shop with different SKUs, how to make money on those SKUs, and you really don't even have to advertise. All you have to do is 
mention it to people as they come through your shop. Hey, we buy. If you show that you've got video games, they're going to ask you, do you guys buy? And you just say yes and it'll come your way. And a lot of st crazy stuff has come through the shop and it's great to do. It's fun to do a lot of research and you can make really good profit on these video games. There's lots of YouTube videos on people buying them at yard sales. I tell my guys, go, hey, go to yard. I don't have time to go to yard sales, go to yard sales, buy video games and trade them for comics, trade them for magic, trade them for Pokemon. And again, that's back to the trade part. What you need to think about is how I can keep my business going and how I can put a paycheck in my pocket that pays not only my rent for my store, but it pays me to uh, keep uh, my family fed and a roof over our head and a decent car in the driveway. Um, but hey, keep reading comics and open a freaking comic shop.